Excellent. So good afternoon, everyone. So my name is uh, Regis Alec. Uh, I run the software engineering group at uh, CloudWatch. So we're a French-based cloud service provider. Uh, and we're going to talk to you this afternoon um, about our journey in order to become a good uh, open source contributor. And in order to, to do that, um, I'm, I'm going to pre co-present with Mr. Loic, who I'm going to let uh, introduce himself. Yeah, I am Loic Deschari, and my day job is to be a self developer. So I write code uh, all day long. And something else I've done is being old. I've been a free software advocate and contributor for 30 years. So uh, that's what I brought to CloudWatt. Okay, so first a few words about CloudWatt. So what we are is a sovereign cloud provider, so created to deliver competitive YAS services uh, in basically in data centers that the NSA cannot investigate, so which was quite important for France and, and Europe. Uh, so we're bringing those services to French and European companies. Uh, in order, in, in terms of uh, financing, so we're actually a joint venture between two industrial partners. So one of them is Orange, the telco. Uh, the other one is uh, Thales, so the defense group. And we're also supported by the uh, French uh, government that has invested significantly in us. And the differentiating factors of our cloud is around security, privacy, and resiliency in order to be compliant with the French and European regulations. And one of the things that also makes us standing a bit apart is that we were started with a free software DNA from day one, meaning that all of the stacks that we've deployed in order to run our cloud is based on open source software. So, of course, OpenStack being the main part, but we're also, for instance, levering Ceph and these days OpenContrail. And today, we're one of the largest OpenStack deployments in the EU. So we've launched last, um, last September uh, a storage solution based on, uh, based on Swift, which we've opened up both as uh, uh, Swift APIs and through S3 APIs. We've also put a SaaS solution on top of that, which is giving box functionality. And at the moment, we're running our compute services based on Nova and the other OpenStack components in beta mode. And that beta mode is going to be converted into a full commercial offer at the end of, uh, at the end of June, where what we're basically going to do is uh, turn our billing services on and start measuring SLAs. Uh, but at the moment, we're fully in production and deployed. OK. And sorry. And, and one, of the, what the, one of the key things, and it's a quick question that we had to ask ourselves, was as um, public cloud providers, we could have chosen to be only a user and operator of OpenStack. But we actually did decide to actively contribute setting up a development capability. And there were two kinds of reasons that we uh, did that for. So the first ones were necessity reasons. Uh, we wanted to master the solution we were deployed on. And we found that the best way to do that was to actually build a team that would be contributing into the various uh, cloud components that we will be leveraging. Uh, the other part is that it is very important for us to drive our roadmap and product roadmap, especially, especially around the cloud functionality. And if we wanted to have an influence of that, uh, we had to be able to talk to the development community. And the best way to do that is to set up a group that actually contributes and is able to do that. Uh, and the last part, and that's a bit part of our mission, the reason we are founded, is that there's sovereignty reason behind that, meaning that uh, we're also there to actively build uh, cloud computing skills and cloud computing development skills uh, in our territory. And in order to do that, leveraging and and contributing into an open source project was the best way to, to do this. What we actually got out of that were a few bonuses that uh, were quite um, interesting for me since I was coming from a very much uh, proprietary software background, uh, and which was that the first one is that that gave us access to world-class technical coaching, meaning that through the contribution process and the review process, that actually gives very strong uh, advice to our developers and really enable them to develop much faster than they would have been able to do in, um, uh, in a proprietary environment. Uh, the other part is that this gave us access to leading edge um, engineering practices and tools, meaning that today, what is best in terms of continuous integration and software engineering process is actually coming in OpenStack. I mean, when you look at the, um, let's say, advanced features that are within the CI, the scale of it, et cetera, it would have been very hard for us and even impossible to actually be able to rebuild that ourselves. Um, the last, another part we saw is that it has really enabled us 
to boost the attractiveness we had for the right type of developers, meaning developers that are passionate about technology and around cloud computing. And as soon, what we notice is that as soon as you say that you're gonna uh, be actively promoting open source contribution, you suddenly get access to much more interesting uh, recruitment pool that you would be able to do in your typical, let's say, localization and money conditions. Um, and the last one, uh, is that it also can provide you a very interesting uh, leverage ability on some developments that you decide to do uh, in the sense that if you have good ideas and since OpenStack is very much meritocracy based, those ideas could actually be, uh, and, uh, and, sorry, those ideas could actually end up being developed or co-developed by other parties than yourself. So you actually have a much larger reach than what you would only have with your own uh, team. So I'm gonna now let Loic go a bit in more details in some of those topics. It's more, uh, it's more examples, because yeah. I'm a practical guy, so you had uh, theory, strategic uh, decisions, and so on. Now, uh, I do things, and I will give you a few examples of how free software benefited in a concrete way uh, CloudWatt. My day job is to develop on Ceph. These are Ceph allopodes. And one of my mission was to reduce the number of disks you need to store uh, user data. A CloudWatt is aiming at buying uh, tens of millions uh, of euros worth of disk. How do you reduce that? Actually, there, there is a technique that is fairly well known, which is called uh, original code. So it's kind of RED5, which everybody knows, but expand it to the cloud. That sounds uh, fairly easy to do. It turns out to be very complicated, to be something that requires a level of mastery of the technical solution, that was beyond me at the time, and even now, to be frank, even though it's complete. So how did we go about that? Well, instead of going to a vendor uh, who would sell this capability for um, a lot of money and lock us in, instead of buying a lot of very talented uh, self-developers, stealing them from Ink Tech, what I did is I started the work in the open as a free software developer. And I faced quickly uh, people who were much more competent than I am. Uh, Sage Vale is most definitely a genius, but he's not alone. He attracted uh, Samuel Just, who is the lead of the core development, and who is incredibly talented. So I got to tackle a problem that required a level of mastery that I didn't have, and I met halfway people who actually had the skills. The two go hand to hand. Uh, it couldn't have happened if I didn't make the first step. And when, when I started the work, uh, they were kind enough not to point my shortcomings and let me go uh, half the way. Somehow it may be convinced the marketing people that it was a good thing for Ink Tank to write this goal in the ink tank roadmap. And that's how, six months later, I, show, uh, I saw that uh, ink tank uh, was planning to implement erasure coding. So I was no longer alone with CloudWatt on this goal, uh, but the community emerged, uh, and in the end, now uh, two weeks ago, it was released, and we have it. Can you, yeah? <laughs> ah, that's it, yeah. I'm very happy about that, very lucky too. Uh, so another example, completely different. Uh, at the very beginning of CloudWatt, uh, the question was, that the mission of CloudWatt is to create a sovereign uh, cloud. In order to do that, uh, you have many possible ways. And although free software uh, is fairly well known in France, most of the uh, management uh, does not know uh, how to leverage it properly. So it could have been the choice of the management to go for a proprietary solution in order to build uh, a sovereign cloud. Instead, because we discussed first, uh, we highlighted that through free software, and OpenStack was a, very, uh, a great example of that, uh, they could have a technical solution that would be impossible to develop uh, even with a lot of money, and 
so they would have the power of this solution without the ties of proprietary um, uh, vendors. That was one piece of the puzzle. But now if you have just the technical thing and you do not have engineers to do changes, you keep looking for people to uh, modify the solution, to fit it to your needs, uh, and in the end, you are no longer independent. You are no longer able to do something without asking permission to someone. So that the two, the combination of the two was a decision that is, for me, on the managerial point of view, uh, something that is uh, the best possible use of the free software concept. A practical example of that would be next slide. What happened uh, in Neutron? So one of the um, stakeholders of uh, CloudWatt is Orange. Orange is a very large telecom company uh, who has uh, an experience in networking uh, that predates cloud even. So there was a big pool of talent there. Uh, not specially skilled in free software, actually. Uh, very few, although they had uh, a large interest in OpenStack, uh, it was difficult for them to contribute because it was a big company and they, they didn't see the advantage. Now there was CloudWatt who chose this technical solution, they chose to invest in engineers to keep their independence. So there was scale and a new culture, and the two were mixed. Edouard, who is sitting here, actually migrated from one company to the other. And some uh, Orange employees uh, started to look forward to contribute to free software. We're today uh, at the Juno Summit, and there are CloudWatt employees contributing to the code and Orange employees contributing to the code. So this example shows how it uh, created something new. Uh, the culture of free software appeared uh, in both uh, companies. Uh, second to last example. I'm, I'm too long? Okay, That's fine. I, I will speed it up. Uh, I've been worried all my life as a developer about the process of development. Uh, it's always crappy. And the reason why it's crappy is because uh, nobody wants to care about it. When you're in a company, you have 10 developers. Who wants to define the process? Nobody. Well, it turns out that OpenStack is so big that uh, it's very re rewarding to care for the process because you have a very large audience. And the outcome is something that looks very familiar to all the developers here and also very scary when it's the first time you look at it. Now for each box, there is a reason why it is necessary. And it's being refined by dozens of people. It's being practiced by hundreds and thousands. Within CloudWatt, what happens is that this is the process that is used for development, not for decision making. You, you have this agile process that is different. So this development process it shows the flow that works for the community and why not for CloudWatt. And it's not something that is uh, all uh, encompassing. Uh, you're not forced to kick everything out. You can use something uh, next to it. So that's another way free soft the free software culture penetrated uh, CloudWatt. Mm -hmm. And last. It's not enough to be aware that uh, free software is great. Uh, it's a cultural leap. When you recruit developers in companies, uh, most of the time they have worked for a decade, if they are good, uh, in the proprietary world. And when it comes to contributing to free software project, it's very different. The interaction with the colleagues are not the same. The social conventions are not the same. And as I mentioned, the technical tools are not the same. So from day one, we established uh, a course that is available to all CloudWatt employees by which they can just uh, speed up the learning curve to become good 
OpenStack contributors. Actually, uh, this course goes even beyond uh, CloudWatt since uh, past weekend. Uh, we spent uh, a full weekend with 20, uh, 25 new OpenStack contributors doing this exact same course, and it was not CloudWatt employees, right? HP, Cisco, etc. So these are the examples I have um, for of how it applies uh, mm -hmm. in CloudWatt. And so this is where we are today. So today we have um, at CloudWatt a nine people team that is actually whose sole job is to do contribution. So just to give you an idea, this represents approximately 25% uh, of our overall uh, software engineering capacity, the rest of it being uh, spent into developing all of the commercialization aspects for our, uh, for our public cloud. So one thing that, that is important to understand there is that in the way the team con contributes, uh, all of the user stories that our people are working on are always things that are making our roadmap process, meaning 100% of the uh, actual features that our people are working on are actually stuff that matters for the, uh, for the uh, Cloud CloudWatch roadmap, which is actually the only way you can get passed through in terms of uh, justification and budgeting and so on. Uh, however, what we're also doing is that we want to secure that all of our people are good open source uh, citizens, so to speak. So we're making sure that we're freeing up approximately 20% of their time in order for them to do, to have the time to do reviews, to have the time to do bug fixes, and to have the time to develop the ties with the rest of the community so that when we have something that matters, they actually can be influential. So today, that makes us the 18th contributor on the Ice House release. Uh, we've had 25 proposed blueprint and five completed ones. Uh, and on, on Ceph, so mostly thanks to, uh, to Loic and his crew, we're the fourth contributor. Uh, there's, however, one point of, uh, of uh, thing there around those kind of uh, vanity metrics that they're extremely important for, uh, let's say, uh, service companies because that's what they build their, uh, let's say, credibility on. For us, it's much more of an objective measure of how much we're doing, but it's not something we can really use from a marketing perspective, meaning once you're selling cloud services, people don't really care how much you actually uh, contribute yourself. But it's interesting for us to understand where we actually stand. So, um, yeah. And there's another important aspect that I wanted to cover, which is, that's, no, that's actually readable over there. That's great. Uh, it's how it actually influences your, uh, your product development process. And as soon as you have a significant capability that is invested into the open source project, uh, you always have three options. All of them uh, with, let's say, advantage and, 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 and cons. Uh, so you can go upstream where the feature will be submitted and get through the acceptance process with all of the, uh, let's say, uh, things that, that this implies. Uh, you can do downstream, meaning you take the latest and greatest version of the code and you do the modifications you need of that. Or you can decide to implement it as an external component uh, where it's going to be integrated via the project APIs. And actually, there's pros and cons with all of that. And what's really important is to really understand what are the consequences of the choice you're making. So if you decide to go upstream, so there's a lot of advantages to that, which is that your feature will be reviewed, improved, and validated. Uh, it's going to be maintained in the product by construct, which means that you have not created any technical depth for your, uh, for your services. Uh, and it can, you can also sometimes benefit from the leverage effect, meaning if it's a good idea, you may have other contributors that are going to help you implementing it. Uh, there's, however, a couple of things that you lose as well when you decide to do that. If that idea was unique and could have made a difference for you in the marketplace, you've just lost it because you've given it to everyone else. So you need to think carefully about what that means. Uh, and the other implication is that you do not master anymore the life cycle of the feature, meaning you cannot control when it is going to be released exactly. Um, so if you decide to do one of the two other scenarios, so if you decide to go downstream, so you keep the differentiating advantage and you also can own the uh, life cycle, meaning you can go as fast as you want, uh, but you do that with a very significant technical debt that you incur and actually the, let's say, the fastest the open source project is going, the most velocity it has, uh, the biggest that technical debt is going to be and actually increase. Uh, because you'll need to reapply it with a recurring cost every time there's a new release. Um, 
And if you decide to go at an external component, which may sound better as well, uh, you'll also be very exposed to potential technical depth, not so much this time related to the speed at which the open source project is evolving, but you're going to be exposed to that depending on how the APIs are stable. So you only need to, caref to be careful about that. Uh, in, our, in our cases, uh, we've actually implemented, depending on the cases, each of those uh, if those scenarios. So we try to go upstream as much as we can. And for instance, uh, we had significant contributions into the Horizon dashboard because it was not necessarily suitable to operate a public cloud when we took it on. And we, through very targeted contribution, we've been able to increase that in the last uh, OpenStack release cycles. We've also done some critical things in both Neutron and OpenContrail in order to uh, be in a position that we would have full API coverage from Neutron, leveraging Open Control, which is our target ASDN. Um, so those are a couple of examples where we've been able to do, do that. Uh, in some cases, we've had to implement downstream changes. So typical case security patch, but we try to limit that and always put some kind of timestamp on it after which we cannot go. Meaning we also decide to do that with a clear end date in mind after which we move back to the regular uh, upstream flow. Um, and the last part as external components is that for certain components that we consider differentiating, such as some components of our security architecture, we've decided to implement them as external, uh, external components integrated through APIs. Okay, um, and in order, in order to finish, I also wanted to share with you some of the hardest questions that we had to face with regard to both investors and stakeholders uh, when we decide to go to this, uh, to this way. So the first and one of the most common question uh, is actually your tiny fish, meaning that do you really expect to be able to influence anything when the big guys and a much larger company than you are actually get involved into that? And, and the truth is that, at least our experience is that if you take the time to bring that culture into your company and train a small number of people so that they can be legitimate, uh, we've actually been able to pass some of the key features of our roadmap to the regular open source project. So actually, this part I size, we've been able to get some successes there. Um, another very common question is the when whatever big company name you put in there contributes, it's actually a rounding error on the PNL, meaning that for a company like us, uh, when we putting nine developers on open source contribution, complemented with uh, uh, 14 to 20 uh, external service contractors uh, from uh, companies like Innovance, that's actually very significant with regard to our uh, development budget. And uh, is that something you can really afford? And for us, the, the reason we do that is really we don't feel that we have a choice, meaning that because we've chosen to base ourselves on OpenStack, uh, if we want to have any control on our roadmap, we need to be contributors because if we want to have any control of which features we're gonna be able to bring to our clients. Um, another one uh, is the challenge you have. I mean, as soon as you start leverage, it's, it's a bit like the, uh, is, is around company culture versus the uh, loyalty to the open source project. And it's really the fact that uh, you get, uh, let's say, a massive boost in attractiveness as soon as you're saying that you contribute, but you're also exposing your people a lot more because people will see that they contribute, they'll start raising a stack, and then very quickly they'll start to be reached out by all kinds of companies because they're interested in their skills. And, um, and the thing is that also what Typically, they're very attached to the, um, uh, to the project that they're contributing to. So that actually, has sometimes that could have more importance uh, than your own company culture. So uh, the, the, the answer to that, I mean, is that we're really trying to see that as a bit of a challenge for us to try to build an environment that is attractive enough so that people stay and to build an image of where we would like to bring cloud out that, is, that makes them stay. But it's, we've really tried to see that as a bit of a positive challenge. Uh, in order to make a place that is attractive rather than trying to hide our people in some closets so that nobody ever gets to talk to them. Um, and the last one I mentioned there, but I'm sure maybe some of you actually got, uh, got that from their management before coming here, is that, well, that's a lot of people you're flying to the summit. So in our case, uh, we have, so from that nine people team, uh, we have some of them that are going to participate in the design session. So we kept a couple at home in order to check our production systems. Um, the, uh, but actually, the, the, the best answer we, we, we actually 
uh, got to that question is that the choice was made before, meaning once you've made the choice to set up a contribution team, it is essential that those people are actually active members in the communities and the best way to actually talk to their colleagues and be legitimate within that environment is to leverage the opportunities. They have to have some face-to-face -face meetings in the design sessions. So yeah. So this was it. Uh, so don't hesitate to visit us. So we have a small booth in E31. So please come and talk to us. Don't hesitate as well to talk to our engineer in the design sessions. Uh, we'll be very happy to uh, provide you with beta test accounts so you can test a bit what our clouds look like. And we'll be really happy, uh, Loic and I, to answer some questions if you had any. Any questions? Uh, yes. Yes. Who didn't? <laughs> we didn't, exactly. But, and and, and, and the, the answer to that as well is that those are people we would never have had in the first place if we didn't contribute. Yeah. So it's, it's really the... Yeah. It's natural. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and it's also, I mean, what, what, what I see as well, yeah, and people also live for the good reasons, meaning they live because they have something much more exciting to do somewhere else, and we're kind of fine with that, if you see what I mean. So, um, other questions? Uh, well, it, it's, uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, those are questions we had. So basically, what, what the, I mean, the, uh, w what we had to do was to think long and hard because uh, some ideas are quite clear at the beginning and then as you progress and, I mean, organization always evolve and change and some strange visions can actually change and you need to justify yourself and you need to have strong reasoning. So, and actually, but the, the, the more smart the questions get, the more you need to think about it and build something Meaningful, basically. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you very much for listening.